Welcome to Electron Line. A few videos back in this series, we talked about the direction cosines, but we didn't show you how to actually find the direction cosines. Well, here we have a technique on how to do that, because now we know how to do a scalar product or a dot product. Remember when we had two vectors and there was an angle between them, let's say the angle is theta, and we want to find the angle between them. The dot product or scalar product between the two vectors, a and b, can be defined as the magnitude of a, times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them. Also, we can define the scalar product between a and b as being the product between their x components plus the product between their y components plus the product between their z components. Well, if that's true, then what we can say is we can say that a b times the cosine of theta must therefore equal to a sub x b sub x plus a sub y b sub y plus a sub z, b sub z. Then if we divide both sides by a, b, we can then say that the cosine of theta is equal to, again, a sub x, b sub x, plus a sub y, b sub y, plus a sub z, b sub z, and divide the whole thing by the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. And finally, now that we have that, we can see that theta is equal to the r cosine of the ratio of the product of their x components plus the product of their y components plus the product of their z components all divided by the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. And then of course remember that the magnitude of any of these vectors can be found, for example the magnitude of a can be found by simply taking the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared plus the z component squared, of course, exactly the same for the b vector as well. Here you can see that it's easy, using the dot product or the scalar product, to find the angle between any two vectors by using this equation. And let's go ahead and box it, because it's such a, a nice equation right here. Now going back to the direction cosines, notice that what do we need to do to find the angle between any vector let's say the a vector, and the x-axis, that would then be the direction cosine of that particular angle, let's call that angle A. Just like we did before, we can say that the dot product, or the scalar product, between the vector and the x-direction, so that would be the unit vector in the x-direction, can be written as this. It'll be the magnitude of A times the magnitude of the unit vector, which is 1, times the cosine of the angle between them, which is simply A times the cosine of A. We also can use this second method right here by multiplying the x components together, the y components and their z components, but notice if the vector A will have an x, a y and a z component, if it's in some arbitrary point, if it's pointing to some arbitrary point in space, but the unit vector in the x direction will only have a component in the x direction of length 1 and no components in the y or the z direction, so those become 0, which means that those two terms drop out and we can then say that the scalar product between any vector and the unit vector in the x direction is simply equal to the magnitude of the x component of that vector. Then if we use the same technique, we can set these two equal to each other. We can say that a times the cosine of a is equal to a sub x, which means that the cosine of a is equal to the ratio of a sub x divided by a, and then we can say that alpha, which is the letter that we use to define the direction cosine relative to the x-axis, which is equal to the cosine of a, which is equal to the ratio of a sub x divided by a. In other words, it's equal to the magnitude of the x component of the vector divided by the magnitude of the vector. We, of course, can do the same for the y direction and the z direction. Then you can see that the two other components, beta, which would be the the direction cosine between the vector and the y-axis, this would be defined by this angle, it's called this angle B. So the direction cosine relative to the y-axis can be written as the cosine of B, which is equal to the ratio of the y component of the vector A divided by A. And then to find, then if we define this angle here between the vector A and the z-axis, we can find the direction cosine relative to the z-axis, and that would be equal to uh, alpha, beta, gamma is equal to the cosine of C, which is equal to the ratio of A 
sub z divided by the magnitude of vector a. So that would be the other two direction cosines, which can be found in the exact same fashion as we did for the x direction. So now you can see how handy the dot product or the scalar product is. First of all, to find the angle between any two vectors in space. And secondly, it helps us figure out how to find the direction cosines of any vector pointed to any point in space relative to the x, the y, and the z axis. And that's how it's done.